What's going on? So, I was saying in the last video there, like I had, uh, our local dealer happened to have one of these tips, luckily, in stock for 36 inch cannon. I guess, does that show up straight? No, it's kind of backwards too, ain't it? How about that? Yeah, it's backwards on my end, whatever. So, we, uh, So we were short rivets, and in this uh, bunch of stuff I recently picked up, there is a ton of rivets. So you know what? I don't need to guess anymore. It uh, here. Let's get you guys in closer. There we go. So I've never changed a sprocket, installed a sprocket. This is gonna be a first, but anyways, that is super tight in there fits in the bar perfectly fine boom comes out the other end oh, there we go comes out the other end good fits in there good but just a little snug in the tip so let's see yeah they're all a little on the snug side like I said I've never done this before so we're, let's see how I'm debating to see if these will tap in they might we'll try that first after I get this out there we go yeah as soon as we get this mounted I was just cleaning stuff off the bench really quick and then as normal I suffered a squirrel moment so Let's see. these tips I don't know if they're all this kind of the same idea but they're tight this one's like super tight, so it's off center a little bit. So we're just gonna line it up with the holes. Oh, got lined up one way and started walking out the other way. There we go. I'm gonna have to find something to use as an anvil. I might use an old axe head. I got it up on the shelf, so now we're lined up. I know I have a chunk of uh, railway rail somewhere. I just don't know where it is off the top of my head. It's probably outside buried in the snow, to be honest with you. So, what do I got for it? Well, you know what? Here, that's a chunk. Big chunk of aluminum. I know this is not the answer, but at least I should be able to get these things in. So, without tight up, uh, I'm trying to avoid drilling, opening up the holes in. The actual rim sprocket so we're gonna try this first if this doesn't work like then we'll run a drill bit through and lever up a little bit yep, going in crooked actually these might I don't know how tight these are supposed to be going through there but up squared up the hole a little bit Spacer on the back side, so it's oh, somewhat flat because you don't want it like that. Because when you're hammering on it, the potential can actually warp your bar. Not in all the way. Give me a sec to find a punch. Well, it's not exactly a punch. I think it's actually from like an air chisel or hammer or something. But actually, you know what? I, I know I got something else that's flat. I actually, should work better. I really got to move all this stuff back into my toolbox. So I'm moving my aluminum back just past the uh, past the rivet because the rivet's already flush. So a couple 
more wax. Wax, hug hugs. It's good on that side. Let's get two more rivets. Let's try this again. Hopefully this time goes a little smoother because now I don't have the uh, chunk of aluminum there running flush with the uh, where the floor nuts are supposed or the uh, rivets are supposed to be sitting. So pull that back a little bit, try to get as close to that block as possible. That, that works a lot better when you don't have a block underneath it. That's number three. Or two, sorry. Let's finish it off with a punch. Move that back a little bit. That was flush. Flush. We'll give this first one a couple more whacks. It's not really flush. I might have. Ground it a little bit by accident there. Oh, that's way better. Way, way better. So that's where we're at. Now we gotta do this side. Get those to curl over. That's where I think I'm actually gonna use an axe head. Mm, you know what? Let's try this first. Sexy find it. All right, so not exactly the best punch in the world, but it might work. Let's see. See how pointy that one is, and this one has more of a crown to it. Yeah, it's probably the angle, the camera I'm using, but I'm going with this one. It's a pry bar. Well, but the reason I'm going with it is because it's not so aggressive, not as pointy, so it should mushroom them out that bad. Let's see. That might help if I edit. Oh, I just drove her out. Okay, means. Means I need something else on the other side. This other side is a little better at holding. Okay. Give me a sec. Alright. No, that won't let me zoom in. So I got an axe head underneath here. Let's see how this rolls out. Kind of a little flatter on the bench. out a little bit. See, I've never done this before. I'm sure there's a method to this mayhem, but this starting to crown a little bit. So I'm wondering if that's seconds. Alright, there we go. Now what I do with the other one. So this one. The other one was touching too much of a point, but I don't know if it's a really good sharp point that we need or what here. That move? Yeah. Oh yeah. We will get this. I promise. This might be a better choice for this, but unfortunately I don't have one. Alright, try this again. Looks like it's sitting good on there. Have a 
it here, I actually might have a tool for doing this. I'd have to dig back in some of that stuff I picked up. I'll be back. We'll see. I gotta figure this out. I think I just found a method to my mayhem. So, make sure that's sitting flush there again. Same flush. So what I did was so I use this really pointy one to uh, kind. Of, it seems like it's probably mushroom out inside the holes and then somewhat rounding it. And I took the side of that pry bar, laid it on the side to flatten it out after it's locked in. I'm not BSing, the other one did work. Yeah, you, you folks can say I'm bullshit, and that's fine. Yeah, if you guys got ideas or tips on how to make how to do these easier, please enlighten me. I'd like to know. Not that I have to do this often, but I'm just kind of curious. in and then I just use this side here of this pry bar to lay it flat on the bar nice and smooth after that hit that's not, oh, that's not bad I might hit, might hit those with a file after just to uh, they don't feel bad though so other one has not moved so we'll give her a full whack I think it's locked in. Feels like it's locked. A little high spot right there. Let's give her one more for good luck. Not bad. That one, middle one, will work. Now that's the first time I've ever done that, but. They're in. Learning curve. Learning, learning curve. You know what? I'm going to give them one more go around. I'm just looking at the recess that's in there. And they're not mushroomed. They're probably mushroomed enough, but we'll give it one more go around really quick and try to sponge. That thing can't spread out. Wish I had a bigger you know, chunk of steel for doing this part. It is what it is. I mean, I'm crowned a little better. A little, a little better. Yeah, that looks good. Spinning freely. Good and free. Bar looks great. There might be a slight curve actually in the bar in itself. So it looks like it kind of goes down the line. I don't know if it showed up there. I can't tell from how I'm lined up on it, but if it's got a curve in it, if it does, that's not my fault. That is how the bar came. Well, I gotta get a chain for this yet, but also this falls into the bar maintenance side. Some of these old tips have an actual grease hole in there, and that's what one of these little greasers are for. And some saws, uh, that Husky 55 or 266, maybe both of them, you can actually put this in at the end of your crankshaft and it'll grease your needle bearing. So. I don't think there's any grease in this one, but we'll give her a couple pumps on each side just to, I know for later it is good to go. 
So I see original grease still in there, so. There. Couple squirts. Yeah, so there it is. Still large mount. No, I guess medium mount, technically. Oh yeah, 3 8 uh, sprocket. Just need to get a chain and get a saw to uh, run that. Anyways, that's it for this one. Have a good day.